Hi, hi, I'm Jonathan Knight, and this is B Movie Madness. The movie I'm gonna review tonight. Well, this is gonna be my final one for 2018, so let's see if it's a good one. Oh no, it's finally come to this. I'm gonna review a Mystery Science Theater 3000 episode. Not just any episode, mind you. One of the new episodes from the revival series, at least the first season, not the season that just aired. Um. The kick, who the people who donated to the Kickstarter, one of the perks was they got a VHS of this. Uh, my friend Michael Church um, grabbed one for me. Um, so not only am I watching this a new episode of Mr. Trent, I'm watching it on authentic VHS vision. And I have seen this episode before because I watched uh, most of that season when it aired on Netflix. You know, Netflix put all the episodes on it. I've seen this episode, and I have seen Reptile Kiss before I saw the episode. So this is going to be a strange episode in terms I'm going to watch. But I'm going to review both the movie and the mystery science you know, aspect of it, the episode surrounding the movie. Now, um, Reptile Kiss is a, um, a strange little movie. It was a Danish giant monster movie. It's the only Danish Giant monster movie. They shot it twice. They shot it, um, um, the Danish version, and then they took they had the same actors come back. Most of the same actors. I think there's one actor that's different to shoot the movie in English. So there is a different version out there. I don't know if it's lost and you can watch it, but I've only seen the American cut, so I have no idea. Uh, it's a for me. It's a very bad but very charming. Giant monster movie, very much of its era. Um, the monster looks terrible, but it has just this awesome low-budget charm to it. Um, the dialogue is cheesy. Um, the actors do their best. Um, there's a like a like the only famous person in this movie is a guy called Dirk Passer. I don't know what his name. He plays some um, a janitor or something. And he has a really funny bit where he gets a, he puts his finger in a, a tank with electric eels and he electrocutes himself. It's, there's a gif of it on the internet. And it drove me nuts trying to find the movie for a year, like a year or more. And when I saw Reptilicus, I was like, oh my god. It's, there it is. It's from Reptilicus. And the plot of Reptilicus is basically these Danish miners find a piece of this, like, basically a little... Like, a dinosaur frozen they bring it back to a laboratory and once it thaws out it ends up regenerating and turning into a, a reptilicus and what does reptilicus do well reptilicus does what all giant monsters do they destroy shit and they continue to destroy it and of course the military comes in and tries to fight off it's a typical giant monster movie but if you love giant monster movies if you love bad movies and giant monster movies then I highly recommend Watching Reptilicus without the Mystery Science. But the Mystery Science episode of it, since this was the first episode of the Revival series, this was there's a lot of, you know, expectations from the fan base. I didn't really like Mystery Science Theater 3000 for the longest time. Uh, but my friend Michael Church, who sent me this tape, uh, I think I already mentioned that he sent me this tape. He is a huge fan of Mystery Science Theater 3000, and he would send me DVDs, like the extras. He'd buy the sets, and he'd send me the extras. And I got into it. I became a fan um, over time. And, you know, my favorite episode that I've seen is um, Zombie Nightmare. Um, I love both the episode and the movie. Them are always my favorite episodes, where I can actually enjoy the movie without it. Enjoy it with it on. Because the movie, like, Nano's The Hands of Fate... Can't really enjoy that movie without the Mr. Science part because that movie is unbearable. As for a B movie fan, I hate that movie. It's terrible. But Mr. Science version, really entertaining. Um, so there's a lot of expectation of this. They have a new host, um, Jonah. Let me see, Jonah, Jonah Heston, this is the character's name. Him right here, and I found him to be a very likable host. Um, it's hard for me to, to compare him to. Um, Joel and Mike from the previous shows because I think I need to see more before, you know, I judge them. But I think as it is, Jonah is very likable and funny. I think the voices for Crow and Tom Servo are very good and funny. Again, I need to see more of the previous seasons to kind of compare them. But I find it very funny. I found Felicia Day and Pat Oswald as the Mads to be very entertaining. I actually wanted to see 
more of them in this episode, but you know they end up being and they appear more throughout the season. So that's not really a complaint. It's a complaint for this particular episode. I wanted to see more of them because I found them very entertaining. I thought the opening was very entertaining. Uh, the riffing itself is very funny. Um, there is a lot of um, I see them on. There's a lot of great jokes scattered throughout. Um, uh, they. <laughs> Um, the dirt passer guy, they give him a lot of shit, which, you know, I thought was really funny. Um, you know, when they discover the, when they discover the, um, piece of reptilicus frozen, you know, they say, hold on your hard hat, boys. We found a vein of Stretch Armstrong, which is pretty funny. Um, and they go, protect the Lego factory at all costs when he's destroying shit. It's very, very funny. It's not the funniest episode of the season. I think, like, the best episode of that season. And that's, I think, the season 11, but I call it the revival season, was Cry Wilderness, which is amazing. And one day I had to review both that and the other signs of it. It is amazingly funny. The movie is so bizarre and out there. But we're not talking about that one right now. We're talking about Reptilicus. Reptilicus is ridiculous. But it's a lot of fun, and the Mystery Science episode of it is even makes it even more fun to watch. Because the riffing is on point. It's funny. It's never too mean-spirited. mean, mean spirited. I think I'll, my big thing with riffing is if you can go you can go over the line and it becomes too mean. Where, and I'm not a fan of that. And I think Mystery Science has that perfect mix of being funny without being too mean. I think, I'm not going to mention the YouTube channel. There's a particular YouTube channel that kind of riffs on movies where I think they go over the line too much and it's not it's not fun for me. It just becomes like, you know, it feels like, you know, bullying. I don't know if you want to say bullying. I'm boiling. Still getting over it cold. Um, it feels like, you know, like, you know, they're jealous. They're failed filmmakers. So they're giving these people shit. Mystery Science it sounds like a bunch of people like Jonah who love these movies. They love these movies. They love just sitting around cracking jokes and having a good time. And I think that's the thing I really like about Mystery Science Theater. It's fun. It's fun without being mean. And I think this particular episode, it was a great start for the Rival series. I really need to watch The Gauntlet, which is the sixth episode, um, second season, or the twelfth season of the, um, the, this particular one. I haven't watched any of them yet. I got them ready to watch, and I'm going to watch them. Especially the Mac and Me episode, because Mac and Me is amazing and off in his awfulness. But, if you have never watched Reptilicus before, I highly recommend. Uh, Screen Factory has a Blu-ray of it with um, a movie called Tentacles. And, if you want to watch this, um, it's on Netflix. Um, I, but, I believe that Shout Factory has put out a DVD and Blu-ray set with all the episodes from that season. But, give it a shot. Um, like I said, watch Reptilicus, then watch the Mystery Science version, or just watch the Mystery Science version. I'm not sure if they, I don't think they cut too much out of this version. Well, at least not anything important, because the movie was, wasn't that violent. It's a typical 1960s monster movie, so you get giant monsters destroying shit, military tries to stop it, they end up stopping it. Cue credits. Um, I'd like to see the Danish version one day, to see how different it is, because I heard the American version was edited down, but you never know. Uh, I want to say another big shout out and thank you to Michael Church for sending this beauty in my way. Uh, watching this on VHS was kind of a trip because, you know, I don't think I have anything that's considered new um, on VHS. I just have, you know, like, you know, re releases of older movies like Video Violence. So this is, was a trip. I wish they would, um, I'm not sure if they did only this episode. If they did Cry Wilderness. I really want a copy of that. If not, I'll just grab a copy of it on DVD or whatever. Oh, because I want to rewatch it, and I want the movie by itself because I think the movie's just so bizarre. Um, but give Re Reptilicus a shot if you like giant monsters, destroying shit, and then you want some just good spirited fun of people riffing on it. And I didn't mention it, but there's a song musical number between the movie of Jonah and the um, bot singing. Every country has a monster. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's really funny. It's probably one of my favorite bits of that entire season. So, I forgot to mention that. But um, th this is my final review for 2018. If you like me, my my channel, give me a thumbs up. Just subscribe to me. Tell your friends about me. Um, tell your grandmother about me. I don't care. Just just tell people. Thank you. 
Um, what do I have in store for 2019? I have no idea right now. I have a few ideas. Um, I would really like to review um, some of the movies that I had left over, like Atlantic Rim. Because uh, I never got a chance to review it. And I, got, I had my intro picture of it, or my thumbnail picture. So I'm definitely reviewing that. And I got a few ideas. I really want to do a mix of old and new. I kind of want to do more Puppet Master reviews. Um, the Retro Puppet Master review didn't do too well. And it's one of the few reviews I actually, of my own, that I like. But I would like to do the Access Trilogy, which were the newer ones from 2010, I think, till 2017. And I would like to review the Little Strike, which is the reboot of the Puppet Master franchise that came out this year. So if you would like to see the rest of the Puppet Master movies, I mean, I'll give them honest reviews. I was really honest with Curse and Retro, so I will be really honest with Access... Uh, Axis of Evil, Axis Rising, and Axis Termination. So, um, if I'm Jonathan Knight, and the reason I'm reaching forward is because I have to click the stop button. I'm Jonathan Knight, and this has been B Movie Madness. Thanks for watching.